Can you tell me who you are and what you do? Oh boy. Well, who am I? Um, hmm. Well, I'm a professor in the university system, University of Hawaii that is, uh, the nearest system here. Um, professor on this campus in oceanography, geology, and geophysics. Uh, at Manoa, I am on the graduate faculty in geology and geophysics. So I have obligations on two campuses, undergraduate stuff here and graduate stuff over there. So, what would you say is so important about our oceans? The oceans are what keep us alive. That's what's important about them. If those oceans were there, we would not be here. Because water in that ocean is cycled and recycled through us every day and every minute. And if that ocean wasn't there, we would not be here. We couldn't be here. They're critical. What, uh, what, is, uh, what would you say is the uh, current biggest threat to our ocean? Climate change. There's no doubt that climate alteration is the mega problem, not of um, my generation, because we caused it. So it's all yours. It's for you. <laughs> it is going to be the biggest problem you're going to face in your lifetime, and um, your grandchildren are going to be really, really concerned with it. Let's hope they can live through it. Would you, would you say that, um, uh, you say that climate change, of course, is the biggest threat to our oceans right now. Uh, would that climate change also include the dumping of man-made materials in it, such as plastic? Oh, yes, it would. Um, yeah, um, the, pl the plastic pollution in the oceans is the tip of an enormous, enormous problem. Um, and the pollution in the oceans, especially with plastics, is hugely significant. Because the plastics are not going to go away. You know, other pollutants get dumped in the ocean, say, um, oh, cleaning fluid or something like that. The chemicals will break down, ultimately, and they'll disperse, and they'll go back into the system. That's where we got them from, ultimately. But um, not plastics. They're hard. They're solid, and they're not breaking down. Uh, so the plastics are uh, keeping around in the oceans and aren't breaking down like everything else is. And what sort of problems is that going to be causing for the um, ecosystems in the ocean? Well, they're already in the ecosystem. Yeah, the problem is that um, the pollution problem for the ecosystem is that they're already the chemicals in them are already disturbing, disturbing uh, reproductive capability for most organisms. Organisms out there like, oh, fish, whales, porpoises, that is swimming, they are eating them. The filter feeders in the ocean are bringing them in to their bodies. The birds are eating them because they think they're fish, for example. And by doing that, what is happening is they're guts, their insides are filling up with the plastic that kills them. And it's going to kill us too. Can I see your finger? Yeah, uh -huh. there are plastics in there. Very good. All right. So just like the ecosystem in the ocean has got plastics in it, so do you. Uh, some, people, some people may not be um, some people may not be as concerned about it because there's this attitude that it's in the ocean, it's not going to affect uh, them, mm -hmm. so to speak. So um, how, how is that translating into plastics being in humans? 
You know, it's sealed. If you can't see it, you can't be bothered with it, and it's not a problem. But uh, that now, that uh, that situation can't be right now because every time you go down to the ocean, there they are. They're the plastics. So you see them. You see them in the ocean. Um, I did a study. I did one of the first studies on plastics in the oceans about mm, 25 years ago in the Mediterranean. Um, and um, it was on floating plastics. I was doing oceanographic work in the Mediterranean and noticed that um, every day I would see things floating by in the ocean. This is like 25, 30 years ago. There would be a refrigerator floating by, and sometimes the door was closed on the fridge, and sometimes it was open. And then along would come a chair, and along would come some broken up piece of furniture or something. This mega junk in the oceans. And most of it was plastics, because plastics float along with wood. And I realized, my God, this, that's incredible. What I did is quantify it. I measured it I, you know, from, from a distance. I couldn't go swim out to it um, from a ship out in the middle of the Mediterranean. And that stunned me, the volume of material. Then long ago, when I first went into the field, we were um, doing oceanographic work in the Atlantic Ocean, we would sail across the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. In the middle of the Atlantic Ocean is the Sargassum Sea. It's called that because Sargassum is the seaweed that floats all over the place. And when you s when then, when you sail through the Sargassum Sea, through all of the seaweed floating in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, <laughs> it was stunning. You know, I we would just park the ship and look at this endless meadow of green surrounding us in the ocean, rising with the swells coming through. And on top of that were crabs scurrying everywhere. And it was just full of life. To the point where actually I remember thinking, stop the ship, I'm gonna get off and try to walk across this mat of green because it looked like you could do it. And you almost could. 20 years later, that meadow of green algae, seaweed floating in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean was replaced by light bulbs, plastic cups, wood, and plastics. Today, it's gone. And today, the middle of the oceans are not covered with algae, but they're covered with floating junk name it, it's there. The one thing I remember so much is styrofoam and light bulbs. Um, it, it's just, it's a stunning, horrible mess that makes you cry. Because if you, you saw what it was before and what it is after, it's just, it's just tragic. And it's just this stuff right here, plastics. They float, most of them float, not all float. Some of these plastics sink. So, when I was a graduate student uh, on another, doing another bunch of work in the Mediterranean, um, I was at Woods Hole Oceanographic. I was in charge of underwater photography, and we put cameras over the side of the ship, and we did a transect, taking photographs on the seafloor of the Mediterranean, crossing from Africa to Europe, and took pictures of the seafloor, and this was in the 1960s, late 60s. Every photograph had a picture of man-made debris on the bottom of the ocean. This is in the Mediterranean. Now sometimes this is really cool. Sometimes there's a Roman or a Greek amphora, you know what they are, these big ceramic vessels, and sometimes there's a monkey wrench. And so this debris from man in every random picture we took as the ship slowly crossed from one side of the Mediterranean to the other. So there's a long history of this man-made debris getting to the bottom of the ocean. You know, a long history. And some of it's kind of neat when you see a Roman amphora, you know, or a shipwreck or something like that on the bottom of the ocean. But then when you now start to pick up pictures of plastic, 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 plastics, it's sick. That's floating in the ocean too. And I 
I wanted to use your finger as an example of where I would look for plastics because uh, fish are eating that. And we know that um, fish flesh has plastics in it. If you had sashimi last night, or you had a tuna steak, you ate plastics. And if you ate it, then it's in your body. These are microplastics, tiny particles of plastics. <laughs> if you had red peppers grown here, you probably had microplastics because the soils, the soils right outside there have plastics in them. Microplastics, tiny little particles of plastics. How do you think they got there? Most likely from, um, uh, from waste disposal. And, uh, They've come from China, from Asia. 15, 20% of the soils out there are dust from China. We have enormous dust storms that come over the Hawaiian Islands and dump their dust on Hawaii. Pre-plastics, that dust was welcomed because in that dust was, were nutrients that our plants need because the soils in Hawaii are not particularly rich in nutrients. These are not really particularly great soils. But now the plastics are coming in as part of the dust load. And it's something I would like to start measuring, for example, here at this building, here at the Windward Campus. I, need, I would love to have a student work with me and let's see how much plastics do come in. They're out there in that soil though. And are they getting into the plants? Next place to do a study. We know they're getting into the ocean because we find them in fish flesh. And if you just had fish last night, sashimi, tuna steak, mahi-mahi, <laughs> you had plastics and they're in your body because they're so small and they're so tiny. This is a problem. Did you, um, did you wash your hair last night with shampoo? Yeah. Maybe did you perhaps use this shampoo? Or did you perhaps scrub your skin with this from CVS? Or this particular stuff here from CVS? Well, if you did, then See those? Those are the plastics I squeezed out of a full tube of that. These are the plastics right here that I squeezed out of that tube. And these are the plastics right here in this little vial. See all of that? That is what's contained in that tube. And if you washed your hair, scrubbed your skin, then those plastics abraded your skin, went into your hair, went down the drain, and they're now out there in the ocean. They float, those particular plastics. So they're out there. You don't see them. What you see instead when you go out in the ocean is, you know, this kind of stuff here. That junk. If it's small enough, or maybe you see a, a whole plastic boat. Birds eat that. Birds key in on floating debris on the surface thinking it's a fish and if they see this color here they might think that's one kind of fish and if they see this they might think oh that could be a squid I'm going to go down and eat it. So plastics are nasty. They come in also I'm only showing you here good sized stuff microplastics and these things here. They're an enormous, huge problem. <laughs> Unreal how much there are. They're, ev they're everywhere. So this is part of what we've done in my generation. Sorry, it's my generation that has done this to contribute to polluting the ocean. In this jar, little round things. I think these are called not noodles or something like that. These are the raw plastic that are used in factories here on Oahu. 
they melt these down and make little bits like this to add to these creams, or they melt this down to make plastic spoons and forks and knives, for example. This is a raw plastic that's used, reformed, to make plastic dishes, plastic bowls. These are the raw material that a ship is bringing here to Hawaii, and somehow they escape. They're all over the place on the beaches. So I can't, I just can't emphasize more the magnitude, the incredible magnitude of the problem. It's stunning. It is just, and what kind of just actually makes me feel pretty bad. It's my generation that did this. These weren't in the oceans. 50 years ago. They are now. I want to be 50 again. Hmm. I could stop all this. Do you know that plastics are now in the record, the geological, geophysical record of the earth in, in soils and in rocks. There are rocks now we're finding that have plastic in them. So it's a new kind of fossil in rocks. And not only that, but it is so ubiquitous everywhere that we are now, now defining a whole new geologic period called the Anthropocene by the presence of this in the rock record. Making rocks is no easy process, but the Earth does it. There's so much of this that it's now in the rock record, and we now define a new geological period that is called the Anthropocene on the presence of this stuff in the ocean and in the rock record and in the land record. This is pretty yucky. To say the least. And I, how we're going to solve this and do something, I just, I, I have no idea. I mean, the, the, the problem has come on us so fast, so quickly, and is so huge. I, I really don't know how to resolve it. How can we live without plastics? Here's plastics in my eyeglasses, you know, in these tubes and plastic cups and spoons and um, I, <laughs> surrounding my hot dog that I'll eat for lunch as a casing. I just don't know what. How can I live without it? These plastics, as you were saying, is an immensely huge issue that's covering pretty much the entire planet, mm -hmm. our rocks, our oceans. And while there's a lot of very uh, clear issues with it, such as uh, if a bird eats it, it's going to block their digestive tract. Mm -hmm. But what makes the microplastics so very deadly, so much worse than simply just swallowing something that blocks out your ability to eat? Because it's so readily ingested, it can be in anything. It's in the soils out there, it's in the o ocean, it's in the creams, it's, you know, it's just so tiny it gets into everything. And so, um, it's going to get easily cycled and recycled through all kinds of biological, anthropogenic systems. That's, that's the big problem. I don't... You know, it, it, it's an interesting question to say, okay, let's stop plastic right now. No more. How long would it take for this planet to cleanse itself? Um, uh, it's an interesting question. Nobody's faced it. Nobody's talked about it. Nobody has. And I think even we're concerned with it. Probably because we're afraid to answer the question. But <laughs> you know, how, to, how to begin to answer it? I mean, we're still searching for how much is there. You know, I just told you this in the soils out there. Is it really, or am I just kind of, uh, well, let's go find out.
but I haven't done it yet. I don't have students doing it yet. Um, is it in the rain? Yes, it's got to be in every raindrop, but is it really? So I need some student, I need some that study to go out and collect raindrops and say, are there plastics in it? That's what. I have a study that I'm trying to put together to, to go down to one of our local fish ponds on Kaneohe Bay and take a look at the bugs and the, the muds and the fish and the crabs and everything that's down there, the lemu, the mangroves, all that, and see what of all of this stuff have they assimilated, how much is in there. But um, that's in a pile like this. <laughs> my desk because I don't have time to do it. Hmm. Just don't have the time to do it, but it needs to be done. So what I'm saying is we've got to have information before we know what we want to do and how we're going to do it, right? So I'm waving my arms all around, but uh, I can't put numbers on it. Got to put numbers on things. Know how severe the problem is, where the problem is focused and all that, and figure out ways to do it. <sighs> Sorry. That's for your generation. We all have. You're going to have to tackle it. And it's, you can blame me all you want. Um, go ahead. I mean, you're perfectly welcome, and you should. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, that is just what we're going to have to tackle with, as you were saying, yeah. the up and coming generation. We are going to have to tackle it piece by piece by piece by piece, yeah. By a little bit by little bitty bit, a little bitty thing by, you know, <laughs> say raindrop by raindrop, by spade by spade of soil. Um, well, that's for your information, enough people have complained about this that I bought these at uh, the local drugstore, CVS, but, uh, um, they claim now that they're, they're not stocking these things anymore. That's good, that's very good because of complaints. But, um, these are nice steps. Every little step helps. I'm not gonna degrade anybody that has done that, taken that step, um, because they were unaware. And that's kind of what we have to do, make people aware that we will have to. Yeah. And uh, how is it with other things besides plastic, something solid like this? How about with chemicals that get into the system? How long are they going to stick around? Are they in the raindrops? Are they going through this whole system? Are they in the oceans? Yeah, they are. Remember? Panama Bay, great now because the water when you go swimming there doesn't smell like um, sunscreen <laughs> coming off of people's bodies getting into the water and it's so so ubiquitous that you just smell it. I mean you don't have to put on sunscreen, just go dive in the ocean and you get coated with it. You know it's this kind of thing that again needs to be studied. Well, part and parcel of this and part and parcel of the energy system that goes towards the cycling and the recycling of all of this stuff is involved in how the atmosphere and the ocean work. How the ocean and the atmosphere work are being perturbed right now by alterations in climate. And this is where climate change comes in because it is the controlling factor in how the oceans and the atmospheres work. All right. Uh, thank you for your time. Okay, sorry. That was a little negative spin, wasn't it?